Well, hi everyone. This is Raymond Ali, and welcome back. So today we are going to explore and having the spotlight on a very important concept in software development that is API patterns and practices. So we'll talk about what they are, how they work, and when and how to use them effectively. And I'll try my best to explain this concept in a very simple way so that even if you are new to programming or software development, it would be easy for you to understand this concept throughout this podcast. So let's get straight into the topic. So in this podcast, we'll be covering some types of API design patterns, some use cases of RESTful API, RPC API versus RESTful API, some key characteristics and use cases of GraphQL, significance of heteros and some key constants of REST API. Along that, we'll be covering some best and common practices for building reliable and secure RESTful APIs. So well, uh, before talking about the types of APIs, let's first understand what API itself is. So as per Google, API or program or application programming interface is a medium or a set of rules that allows software application to communicate with each other for data exchange and information. Well, it sounds technical definition, right? So let's understand from some real world examples. Suppose that we go in a restaurant. So generally, customer cannot directly communicate with chef about the order, right? So for communication between customer and chef, waiters are the medium. Similarly, API is a medium for communication between server and client for data exchange. So as a client and server cannot directly communicate with each other. So API is the backbone of a software application, whether you are checking your bank account balance, whether you are ordering food, whether you are shopping online, so or even scrolling through your social media. It is all about the APIs that are working behind the scenes to make it happen. So as we knew that what API is, let's talk about some common types of API design pattern. First up is RESTful API or representational state transfers. And it is the most popular and common architectural style for, build, for building web services. And second thing to keep in mind that the REST APIs uses standard HTTP methods like get, post, put, and delete for communication with server uh, for, and for data exchange. And lastly, uh, RESTful APIs are, are a perfect fit for the mobile applications, social media, and e-commerce-like applications. Moving forward with RPC or remote procedure call. Remote procedure call APIs work like ordering food at a drive through. You tell the server that what you want and it quickly gets it for you. So this API pattern is a great fit for the situation where speed matters like um, banking transactions or playing online games. Next is GraphQL. GraphQL focuses on straightforward communication, like it allows clients to request exactly and only what data they need by reducing and avoiding unnecessary number of requests and by providing single endpoint. Well, let's understand from some real world example. Think of GraphQL as a customized dress tailor where you tell the tailor to customize your dress uh, as you want uh, by avoiding uh, unnecessary or additional dress uh, details. So similarly with GraphQL, you request specific data from the server and getting exactly what you want in one go. All right, next is SOAP API or Simple Object Access Protocol. SOAP API focuses on reliability and security by providing a strict format for communication between client and server. While it's more structured and strict than other APIs, so it is often used in application or systems where strong consistency and security and reliability is the requirement, such as uh, financial uh, transactions or enterprises systems. Okay, so next is HETEOS, and HETEOS stands for Hypermedia as an Engine of Application State. So before understanding HETEOS, let's understand what Hypermedia is. So for example, uh, you check out a website to read an article. So uh, you'll find at the end of the article, author provides links to his further de uh, related articles to read. So that is the example of uh, Hypermedia. Hateos provides hyperlinks with each response that uh, link to other related resources, like a GPS showing you where to go next without getting lost in the details. 
All right, next is event driven. Event driven APIs are very simple and used for uh, instant notifications and alerts. Lastly, the message queue and uh, message queue API is a digital is like a digital to do list. Systems are tasks uh, to a queue and which are processed one by one, ensuring uh, orderly and efficient completion. All right, so that was all about the types of API. Now let's talk about some use cases and characteristics of RESTful API. So firstly, as I mentioned in the beginning that REST APIs uses standard HTTP methods like get, post, put and delete to communicate with server and for data exchange. So the uh, so RESTful APIs are perfect design pattern for mobile apps, social media and e-commerce applications. That is the first use case. And talking about the characteristics of a RESTful API, so basically there are six common characteristics of RESTful API. Client server architecture, cacheability, layered system, code on demand, which is optional, which I'll be explaining in detail further ahead. OK, so moving forward, uh, how does RPC API differ from RESTful API and what are its advantages and challenges? First, RPC is like uh, directly asking a server to do something, while a RESTful API uh, uses common commands like get, post, put, delete to get, send, and information. Secondly, uh, RPC can be faster, but they are harder to set up, while RESTful APIs are easier to use. So in summary, uh, RPC is more customized and direct, while RESTful API is this flexible approach for communication. So choosing between uh, RPC and RESTful APIs considers factors like uh, complexity, scalability, flexibility, and as per your uh, as per the requirement of your project. Okay, let's move forward to key characteristics of GraphQL. So as I mentioned in the beginning that GraphQL focuses on straightforward communication like it allows clients to exact uh, request request exactly what uh, and only what data they need by avoiding and reducing number of requests. So somehow scalability is one of the characteristics uh, of GraphQL. Second in GraphQL, queries uh, are hierarchical, so it supports uh, real time updates. And lastly, GraphQL is beneficial for complex data by reducing overfetching and it is flexible uh, client requirements. All right, so moving uh, to some significance of HETEOS. So as I mentioned uh, in the beginning that HETEOS stands for hypermedia as the engine of application. So in HETEOS, APIs responses include hyperlinks or clickable links that shows you where to go next or links to some related resources. So hence it improves uh, the API usability by providing a self descriptive interface. So user can explore available actions without needing the prior knowledge of API endpoints. OK, now let's talk about some key constraints of REST API design. So as I mentioned that REST APIs have following key constraints, cacheability, layered system, uniform interface, and lastly, core on demand, which is optional. So cacheability is a technique to store frequent access data that improves the performance of REST API. For example, few applications ask for you to save your credentials so that you can log in with one click without entering your details every time. So that is one of the example of cacheability. Layered system. Layered system, uh, the REST API architecture is made up of four layers. The interaction layer, integration layer, application layer, and database layer. So each layer has its own important purpose and use cases. OK, uniform interfaces provides a standardized way to interact with resources. And lastly, code on demand, which is optional, let the server send executable codes uh, to the client. So these constraints are crucial to keep in mind while building well-structured systems and applications. All right, so that was all about the API design patterns. Now let's move forward with some API best practices. So some of the best practices includes uh, REST architectural style that we talked about. 
secondly using the attribute methods correctly third is using resource uris and then using using of hypermedia to link resources and versioning authentication authorization which is very common nowadays and uh, every application contains that and lastly the error handling so by following these practices you can actually ensure your api or a software is reliable secure and easy to use for both developers and users so now uh, the question is why it is necessary to follow the rest architectural style so the answer is very simple that by following this uh, right rest uh, uh, architectural style keeping in mind all the constraints that we talk about you can actually ensure your application or system is reliable secure and easy to use okay so moving uh, to the use of http methods so one of the right practice of rest api design pattern is correct use of http methods which is a backbone of rest api so there are four common http methods that is used in rest and it is very simple to use first one is get that is used to retrieve data or listing of the data in application the second is post that is used to create a new record or uh, data in the application the third is port which is used to update or existing record or data and lastly the delete delete is used for removing or deleting the data or information okay so moving forward with another common practice which is versioning versioning is the process of managing and tracking changes to an api like oh uh, you like to add new features or changes to product but without breaking the existing functionality or workflow so versioning is very crucial part of uh, in api development okay so next is authentication and authorization which is a part of almost every application or software so it is very common and crucial practice that ensures only authorized user can access to systems and lastly error handling error handling is a practice that tells us that uh, when and where things can go wrong and how to handle error nicely so that if your application breaks uh, so the developer know that what has happened and how to fix it and error handling generally contains a status and um, status code uh, and error messages like 404 402 502 so and uh, error handling contains this status code and error message that tells the developer what had gone wrong and how to fix it so yeah these were some important points of about the api pattern and practices to keep in mind while implementing and designing the apis so now i think it's time for a wrap up for today's episode and i hope that this session will be helpful and insightful for the viewers and i'll get back Thank you.